Hello folks, first of all, here's today's special effects budget. Secondly, I'm not Iron Robin, please stop sending me comments asking for autographs. Thirdly, I have no idea where Ash is, he's probably on Periscope. Fourthly, I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching C4E Tech. And fifthly, this is five awesome apps for you and awesome audience. Man, that was really quite cheesy. <laughs> We'll start this roundup of apps with an app called Start, although technically it's a lock screen rather than an app, and it's so comprehensive it feels more like a launcher. Eh? Alright, let me try and explain all that. First of all you have the central unlock slider that does more than just unlock your device. It's a navigation hub for contacts, messaging services, launching your camera, accessing your favourite apps which you can customise, and finally actually unlocking your phone. I could watch those fluid animations all day, but if the lock screen were to end there, it would be smart and functional, but nothing new. Where Start separates itself from the rest of the crowd is this second set of widget categories that hug the left side of the screen. Each one slides out to display information such as notifications, settings, sport news, trending news, the weather, a music player, and plenty more besides. So when I say that Start is almost a launch in itself, what I mean is that you could pretty much manage your entire device without ever having to actually unlock your device in the traditional sense of the term. It's highly customizable as you might expect, although it's not exactly material design. In terms of lock screens though, if you want everything all in one place, start here. <laughs> Get it? Start here. As we all go more digital, one problem we all encounter is a buildup of email addresses. Of course there are individual apps for all these email accounts, but what about one app that could consolidate all your email accounts into one? That's where my mail comes in, but before I show you how easy multiple accounts are to set up, let me alleviate any fears about the app itself. It has what you might call a modified material design skin, so that everything looks neat and tidy with all the buttons and design language you would expect, but with different graphics and occasional button pop-ups that are a little more bespoke to the app itself. It doesn't feel short on functionality either, quite the opposite in fact. Everything from flagging emails to spam folders to a comprehensive search facility, it's all there. So let's move on to the main feature of this app and the original problem that we were discussing. Swipe in from the left and you can add more email accounts. All the major names are there including Gmail, Yahoo and Outlook, as well as any IMAP or POP3 email account you might want to add. Once you're set up, the email account should start syncing immediately, and you'll even get a friendly hello from MyMail themselves. Switching between accounts is just as easy as you would expect, and you'll soon discover that MyMail can become your central hub for all email communications on your device. The MyMail app doesn't request any user credentials, that's all dealt with through the email providers themselves, which ensures a secure login, and Active Sync is supported to make sure you get immediate notifications. Just take a note at this point that you might want to turn off notifications from other email apps, or start uninstalling them, or you may end up with duplicate notifications. For our next app, it's back to one of my favourite topics, material design. When developers don't use it, everything looks out of place, and that includes icons. Materialize is the quick fix app that can solve that problem, kind of. Selecting an icon within the app will let you create a brand new icon that incorporates material design. That means you can change the shape of the icon, the padding of the icon and the background colour if the icon itself is transparent. Creating a new icon takes no more than 30 seconds and when you've finished, press add to home and that will stick your new materialized icon on a home screen. You can also export the icons to a gallery too if you want to use them for other purposes. While Materialize does effectively allow you to create your own icon pack, I wouldn't say they completely adopt the material design language. Still, that padding feature does allow you to make some interesting icons. This next app is a useful if slightly scary utility. It's called Quick Shortcut Maker and it creates icon shortcuts to actions usually buried within an app. Here's a very basic demonstration, the Android settings has loads of different options, hundreds in fact, and Quick Shortcut Maker will list everything it can find to do with settings. So if I pick settings, wireless and networks, it will then give me the option to create a custom icon that takes me directly to that screen rather than having to navigate through the main settings screen. So here's my new settings icon on the home screen and when I tap on it, it takes me directly to the settings option that I want. Unfortunately, it's not always as simple as this. A lot of the shortcuts displayed either won't make much sense or won't work because they're simply not designed to work from your home screen. 
This is where you can use the try function first before creating the icon shortcut. And in this case, it's direct access to my DM messages on Twitter. As I say, this can be a very useful utility that does require some trial and error. And make sure you don't create any shortcuts that do something insane like factory reset your device. I don't know if that's possible, but just be careful. C4 Retech and its partner providers is not responsible for any loss of data using this app. Next up is an early contender for C4 Etech app of the year. To be honest, I don't know if such an award exists, but if you want Ash to go out and buy some sort of trophy, let us know in the comments below. This is Mr. Phone, and it is the best smartphone and tablet product guide you can find in the Google Play Store today. First off, a simple search will find just about any smartphone in existence and provide you with gallery shots and a breakdown of its specifications from design to display to camera to hardware, even up to the day it was originally announced and released. That in itself is an incredible reference source for you to have in your pocket but that's only just the tip of the iceberg. Mr. Phone is designed in such a way that you can compare two phones against each other in all the important areas, such as operating system, pixel density, camera, CPU, GPU, RAM, storage, weight, and so many other specifications. I know I'm just reeling off lists here, but because Mr. Phone's layout is such a simplistic, beautiful material design, it makes every nugget of information so easy to find and therefore interesting to know. When it comes to presentation, less is more in this instance, although there are some nice little touches that allow you to alter the graphical icon set in the comparison tables. I don't know why I like that so much, I just do. And would you believe it, the features just keep on coming. Swiping from the left side of the screen and you can search for devices by brand. So if you want to go through Blackberry's entire back catalogue of phones, you can do. I'm not sure why you'd want to, I'm not sure why I did, but I just love this app so much I'll do anything to keep using it. To cap off Mr. Phone's impressive array of features, we have five options at the top of the main screen. The search we've already seen, but there's also a section for new releases and trending devices, which is an important filter in such a vast encyclopedia of an application. The new section comes next, and I was a little disappointed by this area because I couldn't find any C4 eTech videos. But the app is back on form with the last section, which is a calendar of events for upcoming devices. Lucky there, the HTC M10 is on the horizon. That there, folks, is Mr. Phone, a near-perfect Android application. So there you have it, folks. Five awesome apps that I hope you enjoy and download. Let us know your experiences in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more C4 eTech content. But you know what? We have just time for one last Easter egg. Mm. Oh, it's peanut. Oh. Since you all enjoyed Z-Type so much from my last video, here's another beat that score type of game, which, oddly enough, comes courtesy of the Facebook Messenger app. All you need to do is send a basketball emoji to a friend, and you can find that in the bell section of the emoji keyboard. Once you send that emoji to a friend, you can then tap on the icon to launch a free throw basketball game. The concept is very simple, swipe your finger through the ball towards a hoop to take a shot. Once you get one in, you can start to build up a consecutive high score, and when you finish that score, it will be posted to your Facebook friend. As you score more hoops, the ball at the bottom will move around to change your angle of approach, and eventually the whole hoop starts to move to make it even more difficult. So that's how to unlock and play the game, but this is how to cheat at it. Line up a straight piece of card or a ruler with the ball and the hoop, and you can pretty much guarantee a perfect shot every time. That's it for this episode. Don't forget to post your top scores in the comments below, and enjoy the rest of your tech day.